This is a tutorial on inverse matrices. Now this concept is very useful when working with matrix equations. But before we actually get into the equations, let's find out how to find the inverse of a matrix. So let's look at example one. So here we have a matrix and we want to find its inverse. Now let's consider a formula that could help us find the inverse. So say we just had a general matrix with A, B, C, and D as the values for its various elements. Now if we wanted to find the inverse of that particular matrix, we would need to do this operation here. So the 1 over AD minus CB is pretty much telling us 1 over the determinant of the given matrix. Now we want to take that value and multiply it by this second matrix here. Now if you notice, it's just a manipulation of our original matrix. Our A and D elements are going to switch places, and then our B and C elements are just going to take opposite signs of, from what they currently have. So let's take this formula and apply it to our matrix from example 1. So we'll put in the values for A, B, C, and D. So we'll have negative 2, negative 1, 6 and 2. Now at this point, the first thing we want to do is find the determinant for our matrix. And it's very important to check that first because if the determinant for this matrix is 0, then this particular matrix actually would not have an inverse. And the reasoning behind that is this part right here. The determinant is what's on the bottom, and if that's 0, we would have 1 over 0 being multiplied to this matrix. Well, 1 over 0 is an undefined number. Now because of that, there would be no inverse for any matrix that has a determinant of 0. So let's find the determinant for our matrix. So we'll first take the negative 2 and multiply it by a positive 2. And then we'll subtract the product between 6 and negative 1. Now when we simplify this, we get negative 2 times 2, which is a negative 4, and then minus a 6 times a negative 1, which gives us a value of negative 6. Now from here, when we further simplify this expression, we have negative 4 minus a negative 6. Well, minus a negative, it's just like adding a positive. So we have negative 4 plus 6 giving us a value of 2 for our determinant. So now that we know what the determinant is, we could plug it back in to our equation right here where it goes. So let's do that. Now from this point, we need to make this new matrix right here. So we need to switch our A and D values. So our negative 2 and positive 2 are going to switch spots to look like this. So now our positive 2 is in the top left corner, and our negative 2 is in the bottom right corner. Now as for our B and C elements for our matrix, you notice that we need to take the opposite of each of them. So our negative 1 will now be a positive 1, and our positive 6 will be a negative 6. So now from here, all we need to do is take this scalar of 1 half and multiply it to every element in this matrix and then we'll get the inverse matrix as our result. So let's do that. So first of all we have 1 half times 2 which gives us a value of 1 and then 1 half times 1 gives us a value of 1 half and then 1 half times a negative 6 gives us negative 3 and then 1 half times a negative 2 gives us a value of negative 1. So for us, this matrix right here would be the inverse of the original matrix we started with. Now a quick way that we could check our answer is to use a calculator. Now if you're using a TI-83 plus or 84 plus calculator, you can actually go to the matrix function in that calculator. Now to get there you could push second and then this x to the negative 1 button. That'll take you to some matrix options. 
Now when you're there, you'll see a list of different matrices labeled A, B, C, D, and all the way through J. Now what you want to do is go over to the Edit tab and put in the elements or values within your matrix into one of these letters. So say for example we chose matrix A, we would go over to the Edit tab, push Enter on A, and then put in the corresponding values to each of our elements for the matrix. Now once we've done that and exited, we could go back into the matrix options and under the tab names, we would push enter on the letter that we put our matrix in. So since we put it into matrix A, we'd go over to A and hit enter, and then we'd see it on our screen. Now if we want to get the inverse of that matrix, we just need to push the inverse button, which is this X to the negative one button. Now, alternatively, you could just take your matrix A and then use the caret symbol to raise it to the negative one power. In either case, the screen of your calculator should have something that looks similar to this, matrix A to the negative one. Now at this point, once you push enter, you should get a result that would show you the inverse of that particular matrix. Now when you do that, your answer will look somewhat similar to this, which is exactly what we got when we calculated for the inverse of the matrix by hand. Now just so you know, this doesn't only work for 2x2 two two matrices. You could also use this method to find the inverse of a 3x3 three three matrix or 4x4 four four matrix or so forth. Now if you do need to find the inverse of a 3x3 three three matrix or a matrix that's bigger than that, it is recommended to use this calculator method to find it. Calculating the inverse of a matrix that's that big is very involved and very meticulous. Now for this part of the tutorial, let's actually do an example that applies inverse matrices to real problems. So let's take a look at example three. So here we have a system of two linear equations. And if we want to solve them, Rather than using substitution or elimination method, we could also use matrices. So what we need to do is take this system of equations and change them or convert them into a form that would show this system as a matrix equation. So in very basic terms, we want to have a matrix with the coefficients of our variables times a matrix that has our variables in it and that's going to equal a matrix with our constant values. So for example 3, if we were to set it up like this, we would first have our coefficient matrix. Now in the first row, we want to have the coefficients that are in equation 1. Now in the first column, we want the x coefficient, and in column 2, we want the coefficient for our y. And then similarly, in the second row, we want to have the coefficients from the second equation. So we'll have the coefficient for x in the second equation in our first column here, and then our coefficient for y, also from the second equation, will be in the second column down here on the bottom row. Now when we set up a matrix with our variables, the variables need to be in the same order as they are with our coefficient matrix. But rather than having them in our columns, we're going to have them separated out into different rows. So for example, with this variable matrix, the first row will have our x, and the second row will have our y. Now, after multiplying these two matrices together, we should get the same values as we do in our system. So for example, in the first row, we have the equivalency, or the value, that our first equation should equal. So since negative 2x minus y should equal negative 4, we have negative 4 in our first row. And then similarly as well, we want to have our constant value from the second equation in our second row. So that's why 14 is there on the bottom. Now so far, what we have is our setup, which looks like this. So this is just another way to show this system of equations, but rather than having it as a system, we have it as a matrix equation. Now if we want to solve this system or solve this matrix equation, we want to find out what x and y are. So essentially what we need to do is isolate this matrix that has our variables. 
Now in order to do that, we need to get rid of this coefficient matrix here on the left side. Now this is where inverse matrices comes into play. So if we want to cancel out this coefficient matrix, we need to multiply it by its inverse. Now if we do that on one side of an equation, we also have to do the same thing on the other side of the equation as well. So our next step would be to multiply by the inverse of our coefficient matrix. And again, we need to do that to both sides to maintain the equality. Now, like I said earlier, if we take the coefficient matrix and multiply by its inverse, it'll cancel out. So now this is gone from the left side. So after doing that, we're left with this. So at this point, we have isolated the matrix with our variables. So in order to actually find the values for x and y, all we need to do is take the inverse of this matrix here and multiply it by our constant matrix, or the matrix with our constant values. Now this inverse matrix here probably looks familiar, and it should because it's actually the matrix that we took the inverse of in example one of this tutorial. So rather than going through all that work again, we could just use the result that we found from doing that. So let's plug in that resulting matrix in for our inverse. So now that we have everything set up, let's actually go ahead and solve for x and y. Now let's start with x first. So if we want to solve for x, we need to look at the first row and first column. Now for our first matrix, we'll do the first row and then we'll multiply it by the first column. So when we do that, we get x equals 1 times the negative 4 plus a 0 0.5 times 14. Now when we simplify this, 1 times negative 4 gives us negative 4 and then plus a 1 half times 14 which gives us a value of 7. So x is going to equal negative 4 plus 7 which gives us a value of 3. So in our resulting matrix, in the first row and first column, we'll have a value of 3 for our x variable. Now let's go on to solve for y. So now that we're looking at y, we need to do the second row of our first matrix times the first column of our second matrix. So when we're solving for y, we need to do y equals a negative 3 times negative 4 plus negative 1 times positive 14. Now when we simplify this, a negative 3 times a negative 4 gives us a positive 12 and then plus a negative 1 times a positive 14 gives us a negative 14. So y is going to equal 12 plus a negative 14, which is the same thing as 12 minus 14. So our y will have a value of negative 2. So in the second row and first column of our resulting matrix, we'll have a value of negative 2. So in the end, when we solve for our variable matrix containing x and y, it turns out that the values end up being this resulting matrix here. So x is going to be 3, and y is going to be negative 2. So that would be our solution for this particular system of linear equations. So here we have a 2 by 2 matrix of 6, 5, negative 5, and negative 4. We want to find its inverse. Well, the way that we would do this by creating an augmented matrix is we'll have our matrix on the left side and then on the right side, we'll have an identity matrix of the same size. So since our matrix was a 2 by 2 matrix, the identity matrix on the other side needs to be a 2 by 2. Now at this point, we would just want to get the augmented matrix into reduced row echelon form. So we'll need to do row operations to accomplish that. So the first thing that we'll want to do is change our first row so that we have a value of 1 in the first row and first column. So we'll need to change that 6. 
Now the way that we could do this is by taking our second row and adding those values to our first row. And when we do that, we have 6 plus a negative 5 in the first column, which gives us a 1. And then the second column, 5 plus a negative 4, also gives us a 1. And then in the third column, we have a 1 plus 0, which is also 1. And in the last column, we have 0 plus 1, which gives us a value of 1. And then our second row will stay the same. Now that we've done that, we want all the values below our 1 in the first column to be 0. So we want to change this negative 5 to be 0. Now the way that we could do that is by taking 5 times the values in our first row and adding them to the values in our second row. And when we do this, the first row will stay the same. But for our second row, we'll do 5 times 1, which is 5, plus a negative 5 gives us 0. And then in the second column, we have 5 times 1, which is 5, plus a negative 4 gives us a value of 1. And then in the third column, we have 5 times 1, which is 5, and then plus 0 gives us a value of 5. And then for our last column, 5 times 1 is 5, plus 1 gives us a value of 6. Now that we have our augmented matrix in row echelon form, let's put it into reduced row echelon form by making this 1 become a 0. So to do that, we could change our first row by taking the opposite values of our entries in the second row and then add them to the entries in our first row. And when we do that in the first row, in first column, we'll have a negative 0, which is just 0, plus 1 will give us a value of 1. And then in the second column, negative 1 plus 1 will give us a 0. And then in the third column, negative 5 plus 1 gives us a negative 4. And then in the last column, negative 6 plus 1 gives us a negative 5. And then our second row will stay the same. Now we have our matrix in reduced row echelon form. With this information, we now know what the inverse of our matrix will be. All we have to do is take the 2 by 2 matrix that's on the right side of our vertical bars in the augmented matrix. So the inverse of the matrix 6, 5, negative 5, and negative 4 equals the result from our augmented matrix. Negative 4, negative 5, 5, and 6. Now you know how to find the inverse of matrices using an augmented matrix in its reduced row echelon form. And this method could be used for any size matrix as long as it has an inverse.